Everything is uh, troublesome with the bill, uh, apart from the fact that uh, it's uh, coming at a very wrong time. The timing is very wrong. Uh, it's dealing with a very sensitive matter. It's dealing with a natural resource that is unlike any other. Uh, even the most important resource that has been to our economy, oil, cannot be compared to water when it comes to uh, the issue of management and control. So apart from the fears that have been generated as a, result, as a result of security concerns, because we see a lot of conflicts across the world, from Southeast Asia to, uh, to former Soviet Union, and even in the Middle East, a lot of crises, and even in this country, we've first seen uh, headsmen and farmers conflicts over water, dwindling resources of water. And so it's, it's, it's a very dangerous way. But for the Niger Delta... It's what are the dangers? Oh, yeah. lots. You lots. know, yeah, just uh, saying that it's dangerous, you know, it's anti-people, that the federal government is, you know, overracking its own uh, bounds. You, you see, the, the, the very... The, you see, this water bill resembles the 1969 uh, Petroleum Act. And the Niger Delta region, for example, has not recovered from that act, which has handed over control and management of petroleum resources to the federal government. The federal government has done so badly. I'm not talking about this specific federal government. All of the successive uh, administrations in the federal government ha have done so badly in the management of petroleum resources. Petroleum has foiled, uh, not only foiled corruption, but it has led to the devastation. And the people of the Niger Delta I haven't even recovered from the conflicts that are associated by the cost. So how is put. this? So how is this bill talking, going to the, the, same, the same manner in which the federal government took over petroleum resources, in the same way it is attempting to take over water resources. And if you think about the conflicts that have across the entire world associated with water, the United Nations says that water is the most underrated conflict in the world. It can cause serious devastation if it's not properly managed. And we've seen it in, uh, in drought-infested areas like Somalia and other places in the, in the, in the Middle East. The conflicts are, are arising from control of water. In the case of Nigeria, it's, it's, we are dealing with highly divisive issues at this moment. And then with palpable fears regarding you know, resources being controlled by the federal government, being given to either foreigners or given to persons who do not care about the sensitivity of these places where this water weighs. We're talking about waters, for example, the Niger Delta, which crisscross the entire region, and they're all connected to all of the states. And uh, the federal government is considering... The Niger Delta is not uh, the only region that has water. But you no, no, have, but, but you have water coming from, I mean, in various uh, rivers you know, the, and you know, the, in the, the north. The interesting, the interesting the thing is that those who are purveying, who are pushing this bill, this executive bill, are saying that no, it's contemplating waters like the Benue or the Niger. No, no, not at all. It's talking about ownership, control, and management of every water body that passes through states. From the shoreline? Uh, you no, know, internal waters, inland waters. Well, we, let us not forget the conflicts that Lagos State has had with Ni Nigerian inland waterways in the recent times. It is unnecessary because we're talking about how we should become more of a federal country than where we can have state governors controlling water. But you're having a bill that seeks to control even the, the licensing of managing water resources as far as to, you know, sinking boreholes. It's unnecessary for a federal government that means business but it, in, in, in this, in, 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 but in this it, era. But it will interest you that there are multinational companies and other uh, sundry companies who generate a lot billions of naira from water resources and be the bottle, and excuse me be the bottled water that you drink and they don't pay a dime in uh, revenue of what whatever and so, so and so that should interest the federal government at the expense of the development of the state at the extent of uh, at the expense of the constitutional provisions regarding the land use act and the powers of governors to control land so you want to take over the federal government, the Gangantuan federal government that wants to take over water resources the way it took over oil resources that we cannot really account for. The Niger Delta is a, a you know, represents a cesspool of corruption and degradation as we speak. It's a big shame and disgrace to us as a country because it has foiled corruption, it has foiled conflict, and we haven't seen the dividends of the oil resources because it was federally, it has been federally managed. You want to do the same thing to water? But the people are saying, even the water managers are saying that it is quite germane. I mean, you dig borehole in your house and the rest. You deprive the water boards of revenue. So you're depriving government of revenue for development. Well, no, government talks about revenue. We're talking about federal government here controlling water, disregarding the sensitivities and the cultural peculiarities of the people around those water bodies.
that's the most, and, and then in an era where we are conversing as a country, it, there is a national dialogue, national debate going on right now on how to divest the federal government of certain responsibilities because it hasn't done well in managing them. You cannot manage a federal state like a unitary state. It has been a problem. So apart from the security dimension to managing waters from, from a central location for, like Abuja, you are also faced with a palpable historical problem associated with managing resources of a people, of a local people from a far distant federal uh, capital without regards to the, 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 to the sensibilities and the commercial and the, 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 the natural resource interest of the people. So you would now give, for example, the water management of uh, the, 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 of, uh, of, of the Nether Delta area to a foreign company from China, for example, without co so being interested only in exploitation. The same way oil was ex explo exploited by an oil rights of the people of the Niger Delta expropriated by the military in Nigeria, and the Niger Delta hasn't recovered from it. So our real worry is a palpable fear of what the federal government has done to oil, and then a disregard to the security issues that can arise it's a very it's, it's, it's a very uh, you know a dangerous thing to even conceive that the federal government will control a local water body in a place like uh, you know in a water that traverses um, uh, you know a do and delta like ologo how do you do that and then you begin to say the people don't have control you detect 50 meters away from the water belongs to no no we don't uh, need uh, it at this uh, time all right